people of the internet, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the ratings and reviews tag. This was created by Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I was tagged by Jason's Weird Reads. There are 11 questions. Let's jump on in. Dane Reads. So question one is tag folks, which is a very unusual question one. That almost always exclusively comes at the end. So I'm going to have a look at my comments and see who we can tag. So we're going to tag Book Zealots, uh, <laughs> Reading This Life. Mark Nash, Jim's books, reading and stuff, big hard books and classics, Jeremy Fee, do two more. We'll do the book, Geordie, Why I Man, and Charles Heathcote. Question number two, how do you know you've just finished a good book? Is it a thinking or a feeling response? Well, my Myers-Briggs is INTJ, which is uh, in, uh, introverted, intuitive, thinking, judging. So I guess I think and judge. Having said that, I do sometimes rate on feeling, but I, I think my feelings are based on my thoughts, rather than my thoughts based on my feelings. So probably a thinking response, mostly. Probably like 70-30 split there. Question number three, when you begin to form your review slash rating, what is the first question you ask yourself? Did I enjoy this? That's basically the core of my reviews. I think all reviews are inherently subjective, even when you try and be objective. So I just embrace the subjectivity. Question number four, do you do star ratings? Why, why not? I do do star ratings um, because Amazon and Goodreads require star ratings and it's just the done thing, isn't it? Um, I default to 3.5 out of 5 and just adjust up and down from there. Uh, 4A, if yes, explain your star rating system. What does a good book get in your rating system? Well, a professional quality release is a 3.5 out of 5, so a good is probably a 4 or above. And question 4A2. Is your star rating consistent, i.e. are all your five star books better than all your four star books? Yes, definitely. It's quite hard for, for a book to get five stars from me. Question number five. Do you believe every book has its perfect reader? Does this contradict the idea that a book can be bad? No, n not every book has its perfect reader because um, I don't think perfection even exists. I think some people are better suited to some books than others. And, I mean, a book, as I say, everything is subjective. So a book can be subjectively bad. I don't know if it can be objectively bad. Um, unless it depends how you define bad. Because, for example, Mein Kampf is objectively bad. Because it's, like, morally bad. And even then, morality is subjective. Mm. So a book probably can't be bad, no. Question number six. What book that you hated have you recommended? I, I can't think of any off the top of my head for that. Um, question number seven, what makes a book good, bad or great by your evaluation? Well again, it's just all down to my enjoyment. So good, I enjoyed it. Bad, I didn't enjoy it. Great, I really enjoyed it and it blew my mind. Question number eight, when evaluating the quality of a book, do you have a specific criteria or aspects of the book, such as character development that you consider? Does this change if you're writing an in-depth review versus just thinking about the book for your enjoyment? Um, I mean, obviously the main one I come back to again and again is whether I enjoyed it or not. I don't have specific criteria, but I do tend to look at a lot of similar things. So, especially with indie books, I'm looking at whether it's been well edited, whether the layout and the formatting is good, what the cover design is like. Um, I do do that in general as well for other books. Then I sort of think about the characters, the characterization, the plotting, the world building, just all the usual stuff. Question number nine, do you consider star ratings or average ratings when choosing books to read slash add to your TBR? I do not, no, I couldn't give less of a toss to be honest. <laughs> Question number 10, who on BookTube does reliable and interesting reviews of books that you know you can use to decide if a book is for you or not? What makes their review so good? I don't read reviews until after I've picked up a book that I'm interested in, and I, the same on BookTube, I don't watch a review unless I've already read the book. So, nobody. However, some of my favourite reviewers on BookTube, uh, Pi Ve from uh, Attention with an exclamation point, he's probably the single best reviewer I've ever seen anywhere. Charles Heathcote does a really good job. Kaz from Cats and Camera, uh, especially in her wrap up, she does some really nice, like, mini reviews of stuff. Yeah, those are the main ones that I probably turn to. And Kaz, to be fair, with Kaz, I watch her reviews because she reads a lot of books I know I'm never going to pick up. So. <laughs> Question number 11, does that slash those booktubers use different language than you to evaluate and review the overall quality of a book? Probably because Pi is like really well spoken and really intelligent <laughs> and then I'm just there like, oh yeah, it was good, I enjoyed it. So yeah, they probably do. Um, again, it's a subjective thing. We all use different language. Like I'm, the language that I used to speak is very informed by my upbringing. I will use totally different language to an Australian or an American or an Indian or 
whoever, you know? So we all use different language. We use different language just to speak, never mind to evaluate and review books. So yeah, that was the ratings and reviews tag. I don't know if I did that tag justice. Most of my most of my feet most of my responses were just like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was the ratings and reviews tag. As always, let me know if you've done this. I'd be interested to see your responses. So let me know in the comments if you've taken this tag. Let me know what you thought of my answers. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.